Hello. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. So this is an experiment today we're playing. And right now I'm on Instagram as live. And also I'm recording an episode for my YouTube channel. We'll see how it goes. It's just an experiment, but let's see. <laughs> and to start with, I want to, of course, introduce myself. So my name is Nadej Sezana and I go by Nan. So you can call me Nan, Nan no problem. And I, I tell people that I'm a cravings coach. It means that I love helping people, I love it being you, conquer your food cravings for good, which means for me that you can get the amazing body bliss and vibrant health that you aspire to. And thank you also so much for attending this live, for liking, commenting, sharing it. And remember, each time you do so, each time you like this Instagram live, each time you comment underneath it, or each time you share it on your own feed or on your own stories, your name is entered into a draw for next week, okay? The, the prize for this drawing is um, fantastic. It's 48 hours with a coach in your pocket, could be me, <laughs> in your pocket. And by that, I mean, I'm going to be in your Instagram DMs, either voice messages or written messages to help you for two days, two full days, entangle uh, the thoughts you're having about food. All right. So if you're noticing as you're about to go into the kitchen that you want to eat this particular food, then you can message me and I can respond and we can explore that. That's going to be so fun. So remember, all you need to do to get entered in this drawing is to actually like this Instagram live, comment under it, or share it into your stories, right? And if you do so, please make sure you tag me so that I don't miss you. All right. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to guide you and I'm going to let you decide what you do and uh, become how you become the person you want to be, the one who doesn't eat as a response, an immediate response when you see, for instance, a slice of pizza or chocolate or something like that. Right. So thank you so much again for being here with me. I'm delighted. And now let's start with today's drawing, right? So I've got a bunch of names here. Let's see who is selected by chance this week. It's going to be da -da, Priscille Verdier. So Priscille, I'm so happy. <laughs> You're going to see me in your DMs very soon. And we'll talk about when it's the most convenient for you to have those two days where we explore what's happening for you, right? But let's go back to our topic. So thank you so much for joining me. And if you're here today with me, it's probably because you're dying to know what this concept, what this tool I wanted to share with you is all about. So remember that this series I'm doing, I've been doing that for the past two Fridays maybe, is exploring the three simple step system that I created so that you can conquer your food cravings for good and reap all the amazing benefits if you want to get off the floor easily. That's what I wanted. If you want to be able to zip up your jeans effortlessly, if you want to be able to run after the grandkids or whatever, that can help you. So three steps. So last week and the week before in the previous Instagram lives and the previous YouTube episode, we explored um, the first one, which is understanding. Understanding why you want the food, right? And it's super important. I like to use the analogy of switching the light on when you were in a dark room. You push the door open, everything's dark. You can't see anything, right? So it could be potentially dangerous because you could trip over something and it's not, probably not what you want, right? And on the contrary, when you switch on the light, you see with clarity what's going on, right? So then you can actually go where you want to go or rearrange the furniture if that's what you want, right? And that's exactly what we do when we understand why we want the food, right? So I'm inviting you to watch the previous Instagram Lives or the YouTube episodes on my channel, Nadej Cezana Coaching. And it's so interesting because if we don't do that, then if we succeed, it's really a matter of chance. We get lucky and that's it. But do we really want to be lucky or do we want to be smart and create a system, follow a system that actually works and that can be repeatable effortlessly and create exactly the result that we want, right? So it's really interesting to understand. 
right? Understand why we long for the food, why we so desire the food. And once we get this, it's super fascinating. It's super fun too, because then we get to decrease the longing for the food. I like to see it as uh, maybe you're holding a remote control in your hand and you just press minus, the minus sign, so that you decrease, you reduce the longing for the food. And today, I'm going to share an amazing tool to do that, five different ways, and you get to pick and choose, you get to mix and match if you want, or not do anything at all, but just play with the idea. Why not? And I've decided that I was going to share one tool per week. So stay tuned for next week because and the, the, the weeks afterwards, because I'm going to share more tools so that, that you've, then you've got one week to apply and fully test it out. And then, of course, feel free to DM me if you've got questions, if you've got comments. I'd love to connect with you and help you turn knowledge into know-how, right? Because it's so easy to consume information, to understand things and have our minds blown thanks to that. But it's more difficult, I think, or at least we don't tend to do it as easily to actually apply the knowledge and make it work for us, right? So that's why you may need a coach like me, and I'd be delighted to help you. And it's super interesting that we can actually decrease the longing for the food. We can decrease the desire we have for chocolates, pizza, whatever, because then the third step is really not really a step at all, but still it's important. We decline the food easily. When there is absolutely no desire or very slim desire for the food, then it's easy to say no and say, no, thank you. Right. That's what I want for you. All right. I want that ease for you, that comfort, that confidence, that certainty that, oh yeah, it's not a big deal. Okay, slice of pizza, no problem. So let's go back to step two, which is to decrease the longing for the food. That's what we're going to talk about today. So with step one, remember, we understand why we want the food. Now, step two, we want to decrease the longing so that then, step three, it's easy to say no, no thank you, to the food, right? And it's important to do that because then you get to decide what you want. Do you really want to say no? Do you really want to say yes? You get to choose, which is so much better than the old twilight, isn't it? So let's talk about the two main reasons why we usually reach for the food. The first one is usually the most obvious one because everybody's got that on their mind and they think it's perfectly normal, and it is in a way. But the first reason why we want the food and why we eat the food is that we feel attracted to the food, right? We feel that attraction towards the food, right? For instance, we may tell ourselves, oh, this piece of chocolate is so good. This brownie simply melts in my mouth. I love those crunchy cereals. Ooh. And basically, we're having thoughts in our head about the food, right? And those thoughts in our head about the food are probably creating joy, uh, exci excitement, comfort, desire, motivation, right? It's what we call, or psychologists at least call it, the towards motivation. It pushes us towards the food. Nothing's gone wrong there. It's exactly how we're supposed to be working so that then we actually survive, which is what we want to do, okay? So that's the first thing, the towards motivation that pushes us, that drives us towards the food. The second type of motivation is actually more about what we're trying to avoid by reaching out for the food and by creating those emotions of excitement, joy, and stress about the food, right? So maybe we're feeling sad. Maybe we're feeling guilty about what we said or what we did. Maybe we're feeling ashamed because we're thinking we're such a loser or something like that. I know that I can have that thought in my head, even if it's not true, right? Or we can feel regret because we've eaten so much and we don't want to feel this way, right? So we distract ourselves from those thoughts, from those negative emotions, or at least unpleasant emotions, by focusing on the food instead. And the food, we have fueled those thoughts of excitement, motivation, desire, pleasure, and so on. So we actually numb the uncomfortable and pleasant emotions by turning to pleasant, comfortable emotions, by turning our attention towards the food, all right? So that's, those are the two main reasons why we actually reach for the food. And in both cases, the tool I'm going to share with you today is going to help. Here it is in a nutshell. We're going to neutralize what's happening to us. So what does it mean to neutralize? I'm going to explain. Let's start with the example of towards motivation. You know, it's when we fantasize about the food. Ooh, this piece of chocolate is so good. All right, the brownie melts in my mouth and so on. So those thoughts, when we think of thoughts, it creates desire to eat the chocolate, the brownie, the pizza, the whatever, right? 
And if they create desire, it means that those thoughts that, oh, I love how crunchy these cereals are, if it creates a desire, it means it's not neutral, right? Because a neutral thought doesn't create much emotion, right? And if we create neutral thoughts about the food, then chances are we won't have that desire. We won't want to touch it. We won't want to eat it. We won't eat it. And then we won't gain the weight or we won't um, not lose the weight, if I can phrase it this way. And we, if we don't touch the, the, the food, then we're going to get closer to our goal of body size, body weight, right, health, whatever we do want, all right? So now we know why it's so important to neutralize those food, thoughts about food, what do we do? So I'm going to give you three, uh, three different ways to neutralize a thought we have about the food we do want to eat. The first one is to remove subjectivity, the second one is to translate, and the third one is to decompose. Let's start with the first one, which is to remove subjectivity. So notice that in some sentences that we tell ourselves that create desire for the food, we use words that are subjective words that create drama. We are, we are calling them adverbs, adjectives, models. Remember, I used to be an English teacher, so I'm delighted to be using those words with you. So here are really what these words can be. Words like lots of, many, so much, plenty, right? Or models like should, shouldn't, can't, mustn't, or the synonyms more, more or less not allowed to, forbidden. Also words like adjectives like good, bad, big, huge, extreme, intense, all right? Or small words like so, such a. For instance, if I say chocolate is such a delicious food, I feel intense desire, right? And if I remove such a uh, and delicious, what do I have? Chocolate is food. Super neutral, super factual, right? Or if I tweak, I shouldn't have eaten chocolate into I ate chocolate, then we can probably feel, and I hope you're feeling, uh, this drop in desire, right? Same thing when I'm thinking I'm feeling an extremely intense desire for chocolate, we could actually phrase it differently, like I'm feeling desire for chocolate, right? Sounds very more, much more neutral, right? So that's the first tool, the first way I'm inviting you to use this tool of neutralizing, okay? Removing subjectivity with all those little words. That's the first one. The second one is super fun because once again, remember, I'm French, I live in Paris, so you're welcome. If you are not in Paris and you've always wanted to be in Paris, you are in Paris right now with me. Welcome. And remember, I have um, been teaching English for many, many years. And also my husband being of Chinese origin, Chinese background, I've been looking a little bit into Mandarin. I love languages, right? So translating could be a super fun way to actually neutralize uh, a thought, a sentence that we have about food. Let me explain a little bit more. Maybe you've already noticed when traveling, when meeting different people, that when they talk about what makes sense for them, but what doesn't make sense for you because you have a different system, you, it doesn't make sense, right? It, you don't quite understand. For instance, um, when we talk about temperature, right, we have Celsius degrees, Fahrenheit degrees, we have weights also, right? We can talk about uh, stones, we can talk about pounds, we can talk about kilograms. And notice that if you're not familiar with the system, when somebody's using another one, it's just like, I've no idea what they mean. <laughs> what does it mean? It doesn't make any sense, right? Same thing with currencies, right? So when you're using a system you're not familiar with, it loses its meaning, which means that it becomes neutral. So I'm really inviting you to use um, an app that I love, which is wordreference.com wordreference.com, where you can find a translation in many languages, right? Sometimes, and I'm going to explain why it can be very useful, sometimes with a very different writing system, like maybe Greek, Russian, Japanese, Mandarin, Chinese, right? And this is important because the problem could be that the word that creates an emotion for you, let's say chocolate, when you actually translate it into a different language, like maybe chocolate or uh, chocolat, if I speak French, then it's still so recognizable that it can still create that desire for it. 
and that may not be what you want. All right. So that's why I'm inviting you to use different languages that really have a very, very different way of um, saying things, right? Representing things. And another way to do so is actually to use the third way, which is to decompose. Let me explain again what it means, because we could actually make the food super neutral by thinking in terms of chemical composition. And here, for me, it's really an unfamiliar territory. So maybe it's, it is also for you, maybe it's not, but maybe, well, I'm pretty sure you're going to find a way for you to adapt that to yourself. Like maybe if I think of chocolate, what I have found is that its chemical composition is xanthines, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, caffeine, theobromine, phenolics, <laughs> lots of super long words that I can't pronounce, serotonin, right? When I think about those chemical ingredients composing chocolate, it doesn't trigger any desire for me. What about you, right? I want you to experience this either with chocolate or anything else that you tend to desire to see if it's working for you, if it's neutralizing this food so that actually you don't want to reach out to, for, to it, okay? So let's recap before moving on to the second reason why we turn to food, which remember is the emotions we want to, to avoid. But when we focus on the desire we're feeling for the food, we can lessen this desire by neutralizing the food, by removing subjectivity, removing all those little words that make it so intense, right? Translating right, the word, the food, into a different language and decomposing to its chemical ingredients. So that's what we can do when we notice that we want the food and we actually want, it, want to want it less. Now let's look about the second reason we turn for, towards the food, which is the away from motivation when we want to avoid an unpleasant emotion. So it's really the other side of the coin. I like to make things super simple. It's really either we want the food or we don't want to feel an emotion we're currently feeling. And sometimes it's both, right? But it's really this, sometimes it's yes for the food, no for an emotion, right? So let's focus on the no when we're saying no to an emotion we're currently feeling, right? We turn to food so that actually we want the food to make us feel better. And I've talked about that. I'm afraid it's impossible. So once we are aware, because we understand, once we are aware of the anger, shame, guilt, sadness, whatever emotion we don't want to feel, right, how do we neutralize those emotions so that then we don't reach for the food and we get all the benefits of not reaching for the food? So I'm going to share two ways this time. The first one is defining, the second one is generalizing. Let's start with defining. So that's another way, great way to neutralize it because we simply go, again, remember the teacher and me, we use the definition from a dictionary. So let's, let's say we're worried or we're angry because we notice we're longing for food and we'd rather not, right? So here's how we can neutralize this desire to make it neutral again and lessen the thoughts and the emotion we're having about it. For instance, if I think about um, the, the, the urge to eat, right, I can turn to the Merriam-Webster in its wisdom, and it says an urge is a continuing impulse towards an activity, right? So a continuing impulse towards an activity. I'm having not an urge, but I'm having a continuing impulse towards an activity, right? It's very simple, very factual. What about chocolate? Well, if I, again, turn to the Merriam-Webster, chocolate is a food prepared from ground roasted cocoa beans. Okay, right? For me, and I don't know about you, but for me, it actually decreases the intensity of the ooh, chocolate, the fantasy that I have around the word chocolate. And if we're feeling ashamed because maybe we have eaten more than we wanted to, we can also define overeating as to eat to excess. I ate extra food, that's it. Right, so again, you mix and match, you pick and choose, you use whatever makes sense to you, and defining the word that actually triggers uh, an emotion of desire to eat the food, defining could actually be a solution that you could try, right? That's the first one. The second one is to generalize, which means turning something very specific into something very generic. It can help. Like, for instance, instead of saying I ate chocolate, you could say I ate food. So instead of the very specificity of chocolate, as if chocolate was bad, 
But instead, if you turn to, I ate food, then does it really matter that you eat food? Aren't you supposed to eat food as a normal human being? Right. So that could trigger questions that would help you explore answers about your behavior towards food. Right. Same thing. Instead of thinking, I'm feeling desire, you could think, I'm feeling an emotion because desire is an emotion. And again, is there something wrong with a human being feeling an emotion? Probably not. Same thing with desire. I'm feeling desire. Well, maybe desire is actually normal, right? Generalizing can help you change your perspective on the first sentence that you had, on the first emotion that you had, right? So it could be interesting for you to try that on. Same thing, if you're having thoughts about your weight and that make you feel bad, like if you're thinking, I'm so heavy, you could think, I have a weight, all right? I have a body. There's a number on a device that matches my weight, right? Or if we can go even more general, there are pixels on a screen, all right? We make it super neutral and that's it. I've given you two ways to neutralize the unpleasant emotions that may, t help, that may make you turn to food so that you feel better, right? Defining, Journalizing. And as I said, take whatever is useful to you, mix and match, translate, generalize, define, whatever you please, all right? We want those tools to work for you. Just play with them, experiment with them, all right? Pro tip, notice when your circumstances make you feel an emotion. So if that's really what I mean when I think of chocolate, if I think of chocolate, to me, it's absolutely not neutral because I've got a lot of history, <laughs> a lot of story stir around that word. So if you're noticing that a food is not feeling neutral to you because you're feeling the desire towards it, then in that case, it's not neutral enough. So always check with your body, right? Are we feeling any desire, an emotion towards whatever we're talking about, whether it's an urge, whether it's um, um, a food or a situation, something that happened, right? If you're feeling an emotion, it means it's not neutral. And then you can go back to the steps. You can also reach out for me. You can text me in the DMs of Instagram, right? At nan.cezana.coaching. But you can also reach out to me via emails. My email address is nscoaching at outlook.fr, right? And then something super fun is that you can turn that practice of neutralizing anything around you into a game. That's super fun, honestly. And I'd love to know how you embrace, if you want to, that tool that I've just given you of neutralizing five different ways, right? Or just pick one way and play with it. So really don't hesitate to reach out to me. My DMs are wide open for you so that I can help if you want my help, or we can just chat and exchange and connect, right? And of course, if you want to take this work deeper and really conquer your food cravings for good, faster than you can be, that you may have done so far, so that you can be more dynamic. Maybe you can wear the cute clothes that you've been dying to, and that maybe they've been sitting in your closet for years. If you want to enjoy strolling around, right? If you want to reduce your medication because your doctor is fascinated, is really impressed by your health, whatever your desire is, I can help you. All you need to do really, the next step you can take is simply to book your free Crave Control Consultation call with me using the link in my bio, if you're on Instagram, or using the, or simply clicking the link towards my Calendly if you're on YouTube, right? And what happens next? You book a consult, you book a one hour free, it's, free, it's my gift to you, a free one hour uh, session with me where we're going to talk about what you want. We're going to talk about your desire, right? We're going to express that desire. And it's already so transformative because by actually wording it, by saying what you want, you can already see that it could be possible. And actually the second step is I actually to explore what it would be like for you to reach that goal. What are the many ways you could try to go towards that goal that you've got? And of course, one of the many ways, because we're going to chat a bit about it anyway, is to work with me. And I'm going to answer all the questions you may have about that, right? I'm going to 
tell you if, first of all, you're a good fit for me, because it may not be the case, right? It's not always the case, and I'm happy to help you find really what would work for you. And if you do want to work with me, then we're going to see what it would be like working together, right? So this is my invitation for you. Simply go to the this uh, my Calendly, book your free control, Crave Control Consultation call, and really, whether we decide that it's a yes or no, it doesn't matter. You'll have learned so much about you during that one hour that it's going to be really a worth, a worthy gift, right? You're going to benefit from it tremendously. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. I'm thrilled to offer you those Instagram lives. Make sure you like this one if you feel like it. You comment under it. If then again you've got something to share, fantastic. You share it with your people if you want to. And remember, your name will be added in a draw. I'm going to contact Priscille Verdier in a in a in a second. And do join me for your free craving crave control consultation call so that you gain insight, so that you move forward into your uh, journey towards body bliss. Simply put. Right. Thank you so much for being here with me and I'm going to wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Bye.